Hey, Goblin, you've been really practicing those war drums. I'll bring the generic Goblin noise! This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome to 2022. I've got a bit of a channel update that I want to share with you all before we get into today's gameplay. If you've seen some of my tweets, you'll know that I'm actually building an in-house studio space right next to my office in my basement. It's been a massive undertaking full of learning and tearing down drywall and installing insulation and changing joystick and doing all kinds of amazing things that I never thought I'd do. And that was actually the easy part. I now need to figure out stuff like where to put the cameras, where to put the microphones, what microphones to get, how to run the cords, all kinds of stuff that I really have never done before, and it's really exciting. By doing all of this, I'm really hoping to up my game when it comes to filming EDH games, streaming EDH games, doing board games, doing Dungeons and Dragons, doing miniature tabletop games, all kinds of stuff. Unfortunately though, the next step involves a lot more than I thought it would, which is buying microphones, cameras, and equipment to basically set it all up, which is why I'm so thankful for my sponsors. With their support, I'm able to do all of this, and I'm very thankful for it. And I'm especially thankful for today's special sponsor, NordVPN. So now that you know the sponsor for today's video, you're probably asking, what is NordVPN? Well, it's a virtual private network service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. It's available on most major platforms, including Windows, Android, iOS, macOS, and Linux. It's even supported on Android TV. It's user-friendly and easy to connect with only one click or by enabling an auto-connect for zero-clicking protection. It's also super user-friendly. Look at this, I just scroll down to the United States, click it, and it'll show me on the map where the servers are and easily just connect me with one click. I can pick a server closer to me to have better speed, or if I'm on Netflix, pick a far away one for better content. I can access it from everywhere, so I don't have to miss anything. And there's no more bandwidth throttling, since NordVPN encrypts all of your traffic, so your internet service provider can't throttle your streaming speed. It's also a great way to secure your personal data and internet activity. I use it when I'm doing my banking to make sure my connection is safe. So, if you're looking to help me support build an in-house studio for better filming and streaming, I suggest you go to NordVPN slash MTGMudsta and use my code to get a two-year plan plus one additional month for a massive discount. It's also risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game finds us locked in my basement, and I'm playing my Misform Ultimus deck, keeping two islands, Lord of the Unreal, Imprisoned in the Moon, Trophy Mage, Commander's Plate, and Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. Max is playing Prosper Tomebound, keeping a Wild Magic Sorcerer, Hurl Through Hell, Mortuary Mire, Smoldering Marsh, Swamp, and Two Mountains. Martin is playing his Morphon the Boundless, keeping Reflections of Lajara, Plains, Underground Sea, Inferno Titan, Tropical Island, Xenograft, and Volcanic Island. And last but not least, we have Nick playing Valentine and Lizette, keeping Lanoir Wastes, Two Swamps, Forest, Zulport Cutthroat, Nighthawk Scavenger, and a Herd Bayloth. Martin wins the die roll and starts us off. He plays an Underground Sea and passes. I draw, play an Island, and cast Commander's Plate. Max just plays a Swamp. Nick draws and also plays a Swamp. Martin plays a Tropical Island, passing to me. I play my second island in my main phase, and cast Lord of the Unreal, passing to Max. Max plays a Foreboding Ruins, revealing a mountain, and passing. Nick plays a forest, and then casts a Zulaport Cutthroat. Martin draws, and plays a Plateau, and passes. I play a Nyxos Shrine to Nyx in my main phase, and then cast Master of the Pearl Trident. Moving to combat, I swing two at Nick, and with nothing else, I pass turn. Max draws and plays a mountain, passing to Nick. Nick plays a swamp, and swings a Zulport Cutthroat at Martin for one. He then casts a Nighthawk Scavenger, passing. 
Apparently Martin's Morophon deck is just an excuse to play some duels as he plays a Volcanic Island and passes. I draw and cast Mistform Ultimus using Nykthos. I then move to combat, swinging one Lord at Max and one at Martin. They each take two, and I pass to Max. Max draws and plays a Swamp, and then casts Prosper. Moving to his end step, he exiles an Izzet Chemister. Nick draws and plays a Lanoir Wastes. He then casts the other side of his commander, Lizette, Dean of the Root. Martin draws and plays an Island. He then casts a Battle of the Frost and Fire, and all non-giants take four, leaving Mistform alive. All of Nick's creatures die though, and this trains us for three from the Zulpur Cutthroat, and he gains three. I draw, and equip the Commander's Plate onto Mistform. Moving to combat, I swing at max for six, and pass turn. Max draws, and plays a Mortuary Mire to put Prosper back on top of his library. He then casts the Is It Chemister from Exile and passes turn. Nick draws but doesn't have a land and has to pass. Martin draws and puts another lore counter onto the battle, scrying three. He plays a forest and then casts Reflections of Lajara, naming giants and passing. I draw and cast a Phyrexian Metamorph, paying 2 life to the Phyrexian mana cost to make it come in as a copy of the Commander's Plate. Moving to combat, I swing at Martin for 6 and pass turn. Max plays a Smoldering Marsh and recasts Prosper from his hand and passes. At the end of turn, he exiles a Grim Hireling off the top. Before leaving the end step, Nick casts Death Sprout to kill Prosper. Nick draws, and casts a Corsair of Crufix, and then a Deathrite Shaman, passing a Martin. Martin moves to the final chapter of Battle of Frost and Fire, and he then plays a Command Tower and casts an Inferno Titan, making a copy from the Reflections. The two copies deal three to the Izzet Chemister, two to the Deathrite Shaman, and then one to me. He also draws two from the battle, and passes turn. I draw, and cast Rhystic Study. I then move to combat and swing 6 at Martin and pass turn. Max plays a Mountain and then casts the Grim Hireling from Exile, followed by a Skullport Merchant and passes to Nick. Nick draws but has no land to play and passes. Martin draws and casts Agar the Freezing Flame. Moving to combat, he swings both Inferno Titans at me, with their triggers dealing 3 to the Grim Hireling and an extra 9 to me, and Martin draws a card from his excess damage with Agar. Martin then follows up with Cultivate and passes turn. I play a Griffin Canyon and then cast a Trinket Mage to go and grab a Soul Ring, which I cast as well. I then pass to Max. Max draws, but has no play, and passes. At his end step, Nick casts Return of the Wild Speaker to draw some cards and moves to his turn. Nick plays a Soul Ring in his main phase and then casts a Damnation to wipe the board and passes back to Martin. Martin plays a Marsh Flats for turn and cracks it, losing one to find a Savannah. He casts a Soul Ring, and then drops Kindred Discovery, and follows up with a Xenograft, naming Giants for both. After that, he passes to me. I draw, and cast an Amiiboid Changeling. I then move to discard, and pass turn. Max casts a Chaos Wand, and then Prosper again. He moves to his end step, exiling an Ignite the Future off of Prosper's trigger, and passing turn. Nick's turn has him drawing, and then recasting Lynette, and passing to Martin. Martin plays a Verdant Catacomb, and cracks it, losing one to find a Scrubland. He then casts a Quarry Colossus, making a copy with the Reflections. He puts Prosper and the Mean Boy Changeling under the top three cards of our respective libraries, and draws two cards from Kindred Discovery, seeing two giants enter, 
and then pass his turn. My turn is pretty uneventful as I cast a Master of Waves and get two Elemental Tokens and pass to Max. Max draws and plays a Swamp. He then casts Ignite the Future, exiling Prosper, Revel in Riches, and Reckless Endeavor. He puts Prosper to the Command Stone instead and decides to cast Revel in Riches and passes to Nick. Nick casts a Herd Bayloth and then a Bitter Blossom and passes. Martin draws and swings a Quarry Colossus at Max and one at Nick. They each take five, and Martin then casts three visits in his second main phase. He goes to find a Taiga to help complete his collection of dual lands, and follows up with Morophon, which names giants, obviously, and draws two cards off the Kindred Discovery because he gets to make a token copy through Reflection, which dies. I draw and play a Castle Vantress. I then cast a Patron Wizard, and then snap, targeting Morophon. Martin casts a Crib Swap in response to my Master of Waves, which oddly enough the Reflections gets to make a copy of, and he targets my Patron Wizard. I respond by taxing him for 2 extra mana on the Patron Wizard copy, so I can draw off the Rhystic Study, and then activate Nykthos to make some mana, and cast Stunt Double, having it come in as a copy of the Patron Wizard, just in case, and then tap that to counter the Patron copy fully. The original Master of Waves then gets exiled, and with most of my board now tapped, I decide to skip my attack and pass. Max draws, and just casts a Rakdos Signet, passing. Nick loses a life and makes a Fairy Token from Bitter Blossom. He then casts Binding of the Old Gods on the Reflections of Lejara and passes to Martin. Martin plays and cracks a polluted delta, losing one, to go and find Badlands. He recasts Morophon and draws a card off the Kindred Discovery. He follows it up with Descendant's Path, and then a Mirror Entity before moving to combat. Max activates the Chaos Wand before letting Declare Attackers go off, and reveals a Harsh Mercy off it. We name Wizard, Giant, Beast, and Druid, and wipe away the rest with Max getting 9 treasures off of Revel and Riches. Martin then swings the two Quarry Colossuses, or Colossi, at Max. Max responds, casting Hurl Through Hell, targeting my Stunt Double, and recasts it as a copy of a Quarry Colossus. With his copy of the Colossus coming in, he puts the token copy on top of Martin's library, and then takes 6 from the other. After that, Martin just passes to me. I draw and play a Riptide Laboratory. I follow up with the Spellseeker, going to grab a Swan Song to put to hand, and then activate Nykthos for 5 blue to help cast Gilded Lotus and pass to Max. Max draws, and in his main phase, cast Toxic Deluge where X is 6. I cast Swan Song in response, and Max responds by activating Chaos Wand and targeting me. Unfortunately, he hits my Mystic Confluence and chooses to counter my Swan Song unless I pay 6 and draw a card. I tax him for 3 mana with the Wizards, but the Confluence, and therefore the Toxic Deluge, then resolve. With the board being wiped, Max gets to make 12 treasure tokens, and then in his end step, Nick uses Beast Within and blows up Revel and Riches. Nick loses 1 and makes a Fairy token, and draws for turn. The Binding then gets Nick a tapped Forest, before he casts Gisa, Glorious Resurrector, and then a Bow of Nylea. With nothing else, he passes to Martin. Martin draws, and continues to play fetch lands, dropping to Windswept Heath, and losing one to find a Bayou. He recasts Morophon, and draws a card off the Discovery. He then follows up with Brian's Stout Arm, drawing again, and passes to me. I play an island in my main phase, and cast my own Reflections of Lichara, naming Merfolk and then cast a Mirror making a copy of it as well. I follow up with an Amiiboid Changeling, untapping my Nykthos twice and floating a ton of blue mana in the process. I then cast a Kicked Rite of Replication on the Regiri, making 5 more token copies of it, and passing to Max. Max draws and casts a Marionette Master, putting the counters on it with the Fabricate trigger. He then cracks a ton of treasures to kill Martin and I, and uses the mana to recast Prosper, and then cast a Fiend of Shadows before ending his turn, with Prosper excelling a card from the top of his library, which we see as a Terminate. 
Nick draws, and the binding goes off. He activates the bow to gain 3 life, and then casts an Essence Pulse, gaining another 2 life. Max responds by casting Terminate from Exile to kill Gisa and makes a treasure. He then cracks some treasures to deal 8 damage to Nick to activate Chaos Wand and targets Nick's library. This has him hitting Assassin's Trophy, which blows up Nick's Bitter Blossom. The board then gets wiped, and after that, Nick passes. Max draws and plays a Mountain. He flashes back Ignite the Future, exiling a Bajuka Bog, Thysis, and Urza Saga. He can't play any of them though, so he casts a Bag of Devouring and passes to Nick. Nick plays a Pernicious Deed, and then follows up with an Evolution Sage. Moving to his end step, Max uses the Chaos Wand on him, exiling a Maelstrom Pulse to blow up the deed, which Nick responds to by activating for zero to blow up the treasures before passing to Max. Max draws and recasts Prosper once more. He moves to his end step, exiling a Swamp off the trigger, and Nick then activates his bow to put a plus one plus one counter onto the Evolution Sage and moves to his turn. Nick draws and casts the less good now that his opponents are dead, Wing Grace's Judgment, to blow up Prosper. Max activates Chaos Wand in response and hits Shamanic Revelation, drawing a card. Nick then activates the bow to put another counter on the Sage and swings at Max for 5 and passes. Max once more recasts Prosper and plays the Swamp from Exile to get a treasure token. He then passes, exiling Arachdos Carnarium. Nick draws and swings the Evolution Sage at Max. Max uses Chaos Wand in response and casts a Mortality Spear to destroy the Sage. Once damage is dealt, Nick then casts Lizette again in his second main phase and passes. Max draws and casts a Wild Magic Sorcerer. He then plays a Rakdos Carnarium and makes a treasure. Once he bounces a land back to his hand, he then casts a Dire Fleet Daredevil, exiling the Death Sprout from Nick's graveyard and casts it, taking out Nick's commander. This has him cascade into an unstable obelisk and makes a treasure token, and then moves to combat, hitting Nick for one with Prosper. Nick casts a Gilded Goose, and then Accomplished Alchemist. Nick passes turn, and with no instants and sorceries left in Nick's deck, Max then sacrifices the Wand to the Bag of Devouring to draw a card and takes his turn. Max draws and plays a Swamp. He sacrifices a treasure to draw a card with the bag, and then casts Felwar Stone, and then a Tectonic Giant. He cracks the Obelisk to kill the Accomplished Alchemist, and swings the team at Nick. Nick responds with Arachnogenesis and makes three spider tokens, which eat the Wild Magic Sorcerer and fogs the rest. Max then exiles a Chaos Warp with Prosper at the end of turn and passes. Nick draws and casts Vindictive Vampire. Moving to combat, he swings the spiders at Max, and Max responds with Chaos Warp on the Vampire. This has Nick shuffling it in and then revealing off the top of Forest which he puts into play. Max declares no blocks, Nick then puts a counter onto the spider thanks to the bow, and deals 4 damage, and passes to Max. Max draws, and swings the giant at Nick. He opts to exile the top two cards, and chooses Hedonist Trove from among them to exile. Max then casts the Trove, and once he's done exiling Nick's graveyard, casts Gisa from among the exiled cards. He moves to his end step, exiling a damnable pact off Prosper, and Nick cracks his food token to gain some life. Nick draws and casts Valentine before moving to combat. He swings everything at Max, who casts Nick's Arachnogenesis from exile to block the spiders and take no damage. Seeing a massive damnable pact coming up on the next turn and a ton of damage on the other side of the board, Nick decides to scoop it up. Game review time. So I thought Martin's Morphon deck did a bang up job of representing giants in a fun and powerful way. Sure, he played almost every duel in existence, if not all 10 of them, but I don't hold it against him, because frankly he could have played a basic instead and it probably would have been just as good. 
I'm really glad to have rebuilt my Mistform deck, I missed it a lot, and I like how it plays a lot more than the Orvar deck. Which isn't to say that Orvar is bad, I just like playing Mistform because it's what I know. I was particularly proud of that Rite of Replication on the Merrigery, and I was hoping for a pretty explosive turn the next turn, when I cast Mistform and got something like 7 Regery triggers. Max bringing some love to Prosper is no surprise, because Prosper has been one of the strongest Rakdos commanders I think printed in the last couple of years. The ability of making treasures is powerful, not to mention the kind of card draw advantage that you get by exiling a card at the end of turn. I'm always a fan of seeing decks that are built heavily focused around their commander, so Prosper is always a win for me. Nick's Valentine or Valentine and Lizette, or I think I said Lynette at one point, and it was basically a Life Matters Golgari deck. It seemed to take a lot of cards from Strixhaven, and I like it when people play thematic cards that go along with their commander. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.